Hello everyone, I'm Steve. Mark's in the kitchen. Say hi, Mark. Hi, everybody. And this is Smokey, Steve, and Mark. Either welcome or welcome back. And it is the weekend, so we know what that means. This is a combination of coffees that we had bought and dumped in a large container and shook up. And um, some Splenda sugar-free vanilla creamer. And then a splash of some spiced donut thing. It's very good. A little late in the day for coffee, but I was holding out. So... I hope everyone's well, everyone's safe, look after yourselves and the people you care about, give a thought to the person that you don't know as well, and that's my happy PSA for the day. So, we are going to pick up where we left off with our fair lady, Chantal, Chantal Marie, Foodie Beauty, Big Beautiful Me, the Daily Chantal, and now Foodie Beauty, for the time being. I have her up here, and I have her on my phone, because I'm so obsessed. So, where we left off... Um, was a, the last video was a pre-recorded mukbang um, of her and Pete's having chicken and potatoes and whatever. And the last video actually I slammed onto the end of last week's video because I got through doing it and then she added another video. So if that happens here, you'll see it at the end, just so we're, so we're all clear. Uh, the other thing that was big last week was that she turned down Swole Enormous... Is... Swole Enormous is... Papa Swole made an offer to work with her. And um, she got on board for all of 16 hours and then decided it wasn't for her. Uh, it was an elimination diet. She didn't like online groups. Um, there was a lot of, a laundry list of reasons why she didn't want to do it. So she uh, turned that down both in a live stream and in a video. So that brings us to the first video of this week. There was only four that I was following. So... Vlogging my day and cooking a delicious meal. And in the thumbnail, it says that she is crushing her goals. Also in the thumbnail, she has her arms out like this. Now, Chantal, no news, is a person of size. Her arm comes a little lower, like this. And it has some dimples, because she carries weight there. Um, no biggie. It's not the most flattering shot, but not every angle of all of us is flattering. And, you know, whatever. Uh, she said she had a good day, and... She had a good night the day before, so she didn't binge, she was able to watch what she was eating. This is what she's reporting, okay? This is not, I wasn't there. This is what she's saying. So, grain of salt, as we always do with Chantal. Uh, crushing her goals? <laughs> gotta find out what the goals are first, so we'll, we'll just keep going. It's also hot, so she's got her fan on, and just, you know, when you're, when you're fat, you sweat a lot more. I mean, there's just no getting around that. So, it could be like 70 and that might feel hot to her. She's going to see her grandmother um, for a short visit with all the, the masks and the distancing and all that stuff, and she's close to her grandmother from what I understand, so that could probably be difficult because she's elderly and probably part of a, a vulnerable population, so you can't stay long, and I'm sure that's, that's not so comfortable to do. I'm sure that's a little bit awkward for her. Um, she, when she showed her arms in the video, she pointed to the fact that when she loses, when she loses weight, her body will be not appealing because of some of the loose skin. So we're getting a little far ahead of ourselves, but um, she thinks that won't be cool. But also that it's like a badge of honor, um, you know, battle scars, that type of thing. I'm about 15 pounds above my goal. I hit my goal weight, which was like 180, and between quarantine and poor eating habits, um, I've gained probably 10 to 15 pounds of that back. But when I was at 180, I had a little bit of loose skin. Now, I was, I don't want to say only 100 pounds overweight, but I was not 300 pounds overweight like, like she is. Well, 250 or whatever that she is. And I had a little loose skin. She's been fat, from what I understand, almost her entire life. So the elasticity of her skin very well may be shot completely. And to the point where she could need, like, skin surgery if, if she lost... A lot of weight especially in the apron I mean as is her stomach comes close to her knees and without the fat filling it out it could come lower so just a thought um, so she saw her grandmother um, for her food she had a zucchini with meat sauce watermelon and turkey jerky she had to stop by BB's again cut the cord now I know she said BB and her don't have the kind of relationship post romantic relationship where there was a big rush to get everything out of the apartment that she could come and go, whatever. Um, from when she described going over there, though, uh, she said she doesn't think about BB every day, but sometimes right before going, she thinks she wants to have sex with him. 
Uh, I don't know that he's thinking that when she's coming. She said that she was there briefly. He felt, looked like he was kind of put out by being there, uh, not very communicative, and then she left. But she said she wants to be on guard because switching over to a love or a sex addiction is a slippery slope with someone who could be a food addict. This is possible. It's not unheard of. I've known people who switch over addictions all the time. Um, I've known quite a few people that were um, actually who had the gastric bypass and crossed over addictions once they, they lost the weight. Because, you know, food was the symptom, I guess, of the underlying need that was not being met and food was going into it. And then when the person can't eat that much anymore because surgically their body's been altered to not be able to do that, they go for something else. I'm thinking like Carney Wilson, like she lost a bunch of weight and she was, you know, slim. And then later you find out she was an alcoholic. So it was like another set of issues to deal with. Then I think she got like a freaking, um, what is it? The lap band on top of the gastric bypass? I don't know. That's, that's her journey. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, Chantal's worried about being addicted to love and sex. Uh, Timbit, Pete's cat makes its way into the house. Now, he had to go to the vet, and there was some sad news, because apparently Timbit is, is an older cat and had a paw condition, uh, had some leaky eye stuff going on, and tested positive for feline leukemia. So she's concerned about it spreading between her cats, that she already has, and his. And so at this point, I think Timbit, from what she said, is going to be isolated to Pete's room forever, at, until the end. Um, I can appreciate that. When we went to go get Bandit, we got Bandit during one of my floridly psychotic episodes. So we had looked online at the shelter, we went, and I wanted a special needs cat because disabled animals need the most love. So we went to the special needs section and there was two I was eyeing, Bandit and another cat named Goliath. Yes, I remember Goliath. Oh my goodness. It's been years. Goliath had feline leukemia. He had one eye that didn't really open all the way and he was effing huge. He filled out a whole litter box just sitting. Um, the issue we had, though, was at the time, we were in a position to financially care for an animal, regular veterinary needs, things like that. Um, but a cat that had leukemia might need a lot more care than we might be able to provide at a certain point. So Bandit had FIV, as far as we knew, and we, we adopted him. We found out recently, actually, he went to the vet just like four months ago, Two tests, both negative for FIV. So how about that? So he's going to live forever. He better. I'll be crushed. So uh, she's going through some withdrawals, according to her. Fast food withdrawals, I believe. Uh, God. And she's in the car talking about them parked right across from a McDonald's. Now don't tell... You don't... I would not park across from a liquor store and talk about how much I'm not trying to have a drink. I just... I would not. You tell me there's not one parking lot that has just like a TJ Maxx a Marshalls, Target, something. I mean, there is an argument to be made for making yourself strong in the face of temptation and resisting it, but when you're like two days into trying to form a new habit which involves avoiding fast food, parking across the street from a place that's one of your favorite fixes is not doing yourself any favors. It doesn't prove anything to walk up to that and then walk away. Not going there might have been a much better idea. Um, but she wants to car vlog. I mean, I, I get that, but don't don't par don't park in front of a McDonald's. It's it's not helping. It's not helping anything. Um, she talks about how there's a cheese issue. She discussed it with BB. I imagine their post breakup discussions are quite uncomfortable if they were talking about cheese. Um, they cut back to the house, and Pete's goes on a diatribe about Jeff Bezos and how Jeff Bezos could save the world and he would still be a billionaire. Um, that's 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 Pete's on his his views on on everything. Amazon is the devil, and and he made his made his points and used some colorful language. So that's that's Pete's. He's having leftover spaghetti. She's cooking from like a meal prep box in this video. So it's like a Hello Fresh type thing, but it's based out of Canada. And the food looks good. And actually, I think this is a good idea for her, particularly my opinion, because we've gotten these boxes. We get one called Every Plate. Uh, every so often. And same thing she does. We have the referral code and we get a little bit back and the person gets money off theirs. Ours is very down market. It's more like $30 a box. And even if you eat 
the whole portions there are usually like 600 to 1,000 calories. They're kind of decadent. Um, but even if she ate both portions, I think she's still coming in at only half to two-thirds of a McDonald's binge. And it's real food. Granted, it would be a lot of real food, but it would be real food. So, you know. Oh, and Peeps, 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 Burps. And she calls it rude. Snarkily, but she calls it rude. So anyway, it, I thought it was going to be a cooking video. She cuts away and comes back and the plate's already assembled and she has a new coldest bottle at the end. So that was that. Was that. Um, she did leave a pinned comment under this video. I'm going to use my glasses. I'm trying not to use them for the ring. So instead of the community board, this is kind of how things roll now. So underneath this video, she pinned to the top, OMG, I'm going to rub it in so bad when I lose this weight. I'm saving all the you are a failure comments so that when the day comes, and it will, oh it will, I'm going to showcase them all one by one. Not that I give a flying crap with these insignificants think, but it will be fun to do nonetheless. The overweight critics better start losing as well because you're going to look pretty stupid riding my coattails when I'm smaller than you. Now this is all very touching, but I'm, I'm not optimistic uh, of that. And spite while a motivator is not the best motivator. You know, okay. it, if it's coming from a place of self-care and self-love and I need to do what's best for me and to hell with everyone else who doesn't understand that I need to do what's best for me, that's one thing. But I'll show them, I'll show them all, wears thin. It's an angry approach <laughs> to, to things. Um, but she does get a lot of crap for being, for being overweight. She gets a lot of other crap, probably more crap, for things that don't have to do with her weight, which I don't, I think she runs the two together, but at any rate, that's where she, she addressed that video. Next, full day of eating, thumbnail crushing my goals. So she made it through another day, no binging, apparently, which is good. I can appreciate that when you go through the night, not getting your fix and you wake up, you feel better in the morning. You also feel hungry in the morning though, too, because if you don't binge before bed, you naturally feel hungry often when you wake up. So she gets up and has water and watermelon. I love watermelon. When I was doing my weight loss journey hardcore, like trying to lose like the hundred, I had watermelon almost every day, every day before every meal. And I was intermittent fasting for most of it. So it was pretty much half a watermelon before every meal. It was good. Smoked bacon, eggs in the microwave. I cook eggs in the microwave. You can call me white trash. I own it. I've done eggs in the microwave. Um, and then toast with butter, which she said she didn't eat. So she has a snack later of strawberries and maple syrup. That's new. I'm going to try that because I've never had it. It doesn't sound good to me, but uh, let me be adventurous. Okay. Uh, she's watching 600 Pound Life for inspiration. Oh, God. I loved, loved 600 Pound Life when they were one hour episodes. These two hour dramas. I don't even like two hour movies. But watching two hours of it is is a little too much for me. And especially I don't like it when the people have like a rotten, ungrateful attitude, like they beg for the help, and then they get the help, and then they decide they want to do it their own way, and then blame the doctor because they ate too much. I mean, does this sound familiar to anybody? So she's been getting support on her page, but she's also been deleting toxic comments. So basically only comments, you want supportive comments. I get that, because negative comments don't really help, but tailoring a comment section to only positive comments means if you agree with me, you can comment. If you don't, you can't. So this is, I think, how these other venues where people leave hateful, and not necessarily just hateful, but uh, critical, thoughtful, not agreeing with her comments spring up in other places, because there's no forum on her channel to talk about it. It reminds me of another person who I talk about once a week, Cynthia Beaumont. And it occurred to me while Mark and I were talking, not to get off topic, but these two ladies have a bit in common. Um, they're both generously proportioned. They both tried to do mukbang. Chantel obviously much more successful at it. Um, makeup stuff, again, Chantal more successful. So maybe it's more like Cynthia riding her coattails. But I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if they went out to eat together? Now, they both like spicy food, they both like Asian food, so I think it'd be good. I don't think Cynthia would eat as much of the food that Chantal likes. I think Chantal has a bit more of a, a worldly palate, perhaps. Um, but it was just a random thought, like a, a dueling mukbang type thing. Then, 
she said something that stuck out. Now, I don't think, I don't know if anybody else caught this, but I caught it. She's talking about her cat, who is, of course, on the counter and walking in front of everything. And the cat's butt is up to the camera like this, okay? And she says, Sam, you're mooning my customers. Yeah. Customers. I've, I've heard people say viewers. I've heard people say subscribers. There's one reactor I follow, and she just got... She had to mention in a video that when she called her um, subs assholes, that it was meant as like a term of endearment, kind of. Which, based on her personality, it is a term of endearment. That's just how she talks. Um, I've never heard customers, but... It is an exchange, isn't it? I guess. So, or clients. Well, no, clients would be probably like private food shows, which I don't know if she is or isn't doing. I just thought it was a curious, um, not thinking way of, of speaking. So that's I'm just pointing it out. This meal she made was Korean food, which looked good. Um, she said she's struggling today. She has no energy, no motivation, but that she thinks that pushing through that is what discipline is all about, which I agree with. Uh, she could do with some distress tolerance. I know she used to talk about the CBT group that she couldn't get into at the eating disordered place because it's an unjust world to heavy people. Um, but DBT, dialectical behavioral therapy, is, is not bad. That's used in addiction treatment a lot. I've been to rehab <laughs> six times, and it was used at most of them. And it was very helpful. The one skill, distress tolerance, is particularly helpful for those of us who are easily jarred and go back to um, unhealthy coping skills because the world is just too bright and too shiny and we're too easily hurt and dot, 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 dot. So it's something to look into if you're not opposed to therapy. Um, so what helps for her is staying busy, chewing mint gum, drinking a lot of water, uh, eating her regular meals so she doesn't get too hungry. That's not unreasonable. That's advice I've seen half a dozen nutritionists and a lot of that's reasonable based on what they had said. Um, she needs to get more active and into exercising. She acknowledges that as well. And then she says, you know, do you guys like these type of videos? I know I've asked before, but I always, you know, forget what you guys had said. That's kind of like, I think, a little rude. That, that would be like if I had said, guys, I want to know what you think about these videos. I want your input on the content. Please leave some in the description. And then later in the week, I said, I know I asked you guys before, but I didn't read any of that shit. So I'm just going to do what I want anyway. Well, then why even ask? Why make it feel like the people participate in the content of the channel and I'm just going to do what I want anyway? I mean, it sounds nice, but is it? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, Chantal is going to do what she wants anyway. She always does. And she's the creator and she can. But I, I don't know. I guess when you're just talking to customers, you don't have to be that considerate. So, um, still depressed. She's still having a hard time. She's grieving food she can't have. That's, that's real. I'm not going to you know, uh, <laughs> fighting the cheese, the cheese ghost that's on her shoulder that BB so designated will follow her. Uh, she wants to be able to go like shopping at a regular store. She likes Torrid, but she wants to go buy some regular old clothes. Non-scale victories. These are things to look for. Non-scale stuff. Get off the CPAP. Get some regular clothes in a regular store. Um, being able to walk, you know, X number of feet without having to gasp. These are good things. Next video. Full day of eating and road trip. Crushing my goals again. So for breakfast, she has bacon. That's it. Bacon. Oh, water. She has water. Um, she has a weird growth on her back as well, right where her bra strap is. So she will be going with an unfinished attic, apparently. Uh, she's in the car, and this I like. I like her trips through rural Canada because I've never been to Canada. So I like to kind of check out, you know, what things are going on. She goes to Starbucks and gets a keto-friendly coffee. No announcement, no declaration, just get something keto-friendly. Okay. Uh, she's wearing the Elton John glasses, which I don't even think look good on Elton John. And I'm not even that kind of gay where I usually care, but it just looks bad. It looks bad. Trifling, I think is the word for it. Um, at any rate, she is singing in the car, and she sings a Madonna song. What song was it? Cherish? Cherish. So she's back in Mark's good graces. Uh... She's doing some little storytelling, not a big story, not a TMI, just, oh, my grandfather had a place out here, he had a boat, my life dream was to get a boat, I, I don't know. Um, if she only knew how good her channel could be and how drama-free it could be, if she would just take out some of the crap in it. I mean, she's pulling decent views on these videos that are just eating regular meals, 
hanging out. Um, you know, it's not as extreme. And I know she said she doesn't want to be boring and a lack of passing gas stifles her creativity or something. But it's still, I think she could have a good, relatively drama-free channel and still get the kind of views she likes, make the kind of money she likes. You know, can she be herself the rest of the day outside of the 20 minutes she puts on YouTube? Um, I... I don't know. I mean, it's her decision. Like she said, she'll do whatever she wants. But it was just a thought I had. I thought, this is a version of Chantal I like, that I would probably hang out with. Um, like, she cares. She probably wouldn't want to hang out with me. But, at any rate, this next part is kind of sad. She goes and she takes a pit stop, okay? And she goes to get a bottle of water and use the bathroom. And she comes back and she's, like, red, can't breathe. You'd think she pushed the car for the last five miles to that gas station. It's hard to watch. I remember being so fat that I couldn't breathe. And I was a fat smoker. I'm, I'm a average to slightly overweight skinny smoker now. But I, I know what it's like to not be able to, to catch your, your breath because your body is so fat. It's like carrying another person. But that's for her to work on. And the thing is, and she says as much, the only way to stop breathing that hard is to breathe that hard. You, know, you, you have to move. You got to test it. You got to push it modified for fitness level until, you know, you can get into a spot where you can walk back and forth and not feel like you're going to pass out. So she was going to go to a bird sanctuary on this drive and it was closed and she went looking for a hiking trail and then stopped at Wendy's. So she got a bunless burger and a salad. Um, here's what I, here's what I think I'm suspecting. She wanted Wendy's today. So today was going to be a keto day because keto allows for Wendy's as long as you make a few alterations. So, keto day. And then she bought some, like, I don't know, keto-looking groceries? Was that? Um, it's keto-friendly, but let me ask our keto-files out there, because you guys are in the know. I did keto briefly, and I lost some weight, but ultimately it just wasn't a good fit for me. If I'm eating, like, carbs, regular old carbs and a standard diet, and then one day I choose to eat keto, all the high-fat stuff and you know, modest protein, low carb, but then the next day I hop right back onto eating carbs and stuff. If I'm not in ketosis, is my body not just going to process all that fat and protein the way it regularly always would and store it as whatever? I'm asking. I'm not suggesting that she did anything wrong. I'm just, this is inquiring minds want to know. Just suspect. Um, and don't go get fast food if you're trying to avoid fast food. Pack a lunch. Pack a lunch. You know, don't, don't make it harder for yourself. You know, don't drink non-alcoholic beer if you're a drunk. You know, don't go do that. <laughs> Grocery call, apparently, apparently we're counting carbs. Again, no declaration, but we're doing dirty keto. Um, she finds that if she eats meats, cheeses, fats, they're more filling, and she's going to focus on, you know, losing weight for the trip she has coming up. Now, let's hold on for a second. We turned down Papa Swole, one of the reasons, because it was a restriction sort of diet based on the elimination things. Now, I don't know if you know much about keto, but carbs are not a, a welcome part of your diet very much there. They're, they're quite limited, at least towards the beginning. I call that restriction. So she um, refused his offer based on certain criteria, and then within a day or two decided she was going to do a restriction diet again. So what was the real motive? I don't know. I think it's just because it wasn't her idea. I don't know. She's she's stubborn. She wants to do it her way. She's a very stubborn woman. So, uh, so yeah, I don't I didn't get that part. Uh, she's out of the house though. She is walking. Granted, she's heaving and hoeing, but she's gonna have to. So I give her a little credit for doing that. Um. It's got the Blair Witch breathing while she's walking because she's got the camera, like, right up here. Um, and she's taking it kind of, you know, day by day, I suppose. So, what was this one's post? Because this had something funny under it, too. Crushing my goals again. Okay, no new video yet. We'll see. Hello, booty beauties. All right, right after the keto video. I'm probably just going to do a balanced diet. I'm getting scared committing to diets that restrict food groups because I don't think I can follow through with it. Okay. Uh, uh, she must want some carbs. 
So I think my best chance for me personally is balance and using my calorie counter to try to eat cleaner as much as possible. That's pretty reasonable. That's a pretty reasonable thing to say and to do, I think. I know a lot of people say how hard is it to just eat less, but it is hard not only that, we can't blame ourselves for being just a tad bit confused with all the different diets and ways of eating out there. There are probably hundreds. I guess the key is learning over time and trial and error which one is best for you and to be consistent with that. We will see. Well, we, we, we shall. All the right words in all the right places, but so, yeah. Day four, day trip and vlog, full day of eating. He called me fat. So she gets up in the morning and looks like hammered shit, but who doesn't in the morning? Um, and then she's looking good, dyed her, you know, she wants to dye her hair. She's all like made up like usual Chantal. Looks good. Uh, discovered she doesn't like prosciutto. Is gonna go easy on the beef and pork today because she said it kind of is uncomfortable. It settles in her stomach kind of heavy, which when she wanted to go to Wendy's was the exact reason she gave for going is that meats and cheeses and those things sit in her stomach more fully than carbs do. It's a fleeting sense of fullness with carbs. So the reason she doesn't like it today is the reason she liked it yesterday. And the reason she ate it yesterday was because it was restrictive, which is the reason she turned down Papa Swole. Are we following this? Okay. So, so she goes for a road trip and she had deviled eggs and blackberries for breakfast. I like weird food combinations too. To me, that's weird. Um, she stopped for a sandwich and some ice cream and got some Indian food. So, you know, she's trying to get out of the mindset, I can't have, I can't have. It's I can have, but less. That's, again, that's reasonable. It's just portions of, portion control is very hard. You know, people say, how hard is it to eat less? It is hard to eat just a little bit less. She mentioned that in her thing. It is hard to eat just a little less, especially if you've overeaten your whole life. But People have suggested to her that driving is a trigger, that she shouldn't be in her car because she would eat in her car, but these road trips are something she wants to do, so she's going to do it. Uh, so she parks again and goes for another walk. Now this is where I was curious about the timeline. Do I think that she went two days in a row to two different parks? I don't know. Um, or that all that leaving the house and eating was all done in one day and then just split into two videos and she changed her shirt. There's people who tease through it and do all that. I, I didn't look that closely. It occurred to me that she might have, because I think she has before, but I didn't do that much research into it, I'll be perfectly honest. Talks about her lung specialist. We haven't heard about a doctor in a while. Um, apparently she just has some scar tissue, nothing too concerning, no cancer or anything. And she got weighed and she was 388. So, um, apparently she was like 395 last time. So, uh, she thinks that a lot of the anger that she has is about being treated poorly as an obese person and being called out for being fat. As she was at this park, apparently there were some francophones in a canoe that called her fat um, from, from there. And she picked it up because she has some level of proficiency in French. So that happens. It's not kind, but it happens. I've been fat. I've been thin. And I think she has a misconstrued idea that being thin will, will be a complete turnaround in her life, that people will automatically treat her differently. Um, it doesn't necessarily go like that. Um, I mean, you can get jaded. I mean, I, if I can tell you how many times I've been, I grew up in northeastern Pennsylvania in a very small town, and the number of times I've been called a fag is like endless. Endless! It can break you down, or it can toughen you up a little bit. You know, um, I've done time in jail. And there's only a couple ways you get by in jail if you're gay. You either stand your ground or you've seen Oz. So you have to do what you have to do. And you can, you know, this isn't about body positivity or anything like that. This is just about having, you know, some self-respect and understanding some people are idiots and they're going to say things. And if you know who you are and know the track you're on, you're able to blow it off more easily. So... If she had lost 50 pounds, she'd still be a 300 pound woman, but there'd be a confidence of having lost 50 pounds, hopefully, that she'd be able to fall back on and say, you know what, yes, I am still fat, but I'm doing something about it. Here's what I've done so far, and I don't need to tell you anything because I know what I'm doing for myself. But there'd be some evidence there that'd be a 50 pound loss. It wouldn't be like a two day diet. So you gotta start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere, but still. Uh. Let's see. 
she talks about some stuff that came up in therapy forever ago, about her anger, about the feelings of being, you know, victimized for being obese. And then she says in, like, two minutes later, she doesn't like therapy. <laughs> she doesn't want to talk about it. She didn't like talking to a therapist. They're strangers. I really only got comfortable with myself going through therapy. And I went more than twice, and I got to some issues. And eventually, a therapist isn't a stranger if you see them more than twice. You get to know them. And they get to know you. And then you get to break some ground a little bit. You know, I didn't know any of my friends until the first time I met them, and then I saw them again. So they went from being acquaintances to friends, you know. But, I mean, it's another one of those... Uh, what was it? Terminally unique things. I can't do that to get well either. I don't like that. I don't like restrictions. Well, I really just don't like your restrictions. I don't like therapy. I don't like, you know. All the more reason. Uh, she thinks that uh, while she's fat, people treat her like shit. But when she's thin, it'll be the opposite. Oh, no, no, no. Now, I can tell you as being fat. When If you've been fat your whole life, I don't know. Some of you may have been thin, then been fat, then been thin. We're talking about foodie beauty, so I'm guessing some of us have had some issues with food before. Maybe currently or in the past. If you've always been fat and then lost weight, and that was the case with me, people treat you very different when you're thin than when you're fat. And I don't mean romantic relationships or catching somebody's eye in the bar. I mean, like, people hold the door for you cashiers are nicer, certainly waiters and waitresses, uh, all sorts of different people treat you differently. And I think I didn't realize how not treated poorly, but maybe ignored or unfriendly people were to me about it. So there is some of that that does go on. But also, there are very, very many fit people, healthy people, thin people, on and off YouTube, that are hated on because they're assholes. So... It's a challenging thing. Let's not, like, go, oh, once I'm thin, it, it, all that'll go away. It won't. There's points of contention that people have with me that have nothing to do with the shape of my body, I'm sure. So, you know, let's not get our hopes up, is all I can, all I can say. Uh, so she has the ice cream and the Indian food. Again, she's crushing her goals. She's not binging. Uh, she does some more driving. She has to pee. She portions out her Indian food, and I cringed. Um, because I think she just wanted rice today, so today is portion control. If she wants a burger tomorrow, it's going to be keto again. <laughs> um, she's just chasing diets based on her cravings, I think. So, the Indian food didn't look like... She measured out, which I think is good to have an idea of what you're eating, but just in the rice alone was a couple hundred calories, and then the chickpeas were like another hundred. We're talking if there was nothing on them. Not to say about them being prepared with ghee or coconut milk or cream or butter or anything else like that. So she did overshoot the mark, I think, from the calorie-wise. I'm arguing with the app, yes. But at the same time, any amount of portion control, I think, is good for her. Um, I think she thinks it's good for her, too. You know, just eat a little less. Eat a little less. It's very, it's simple, but it's not easy. Maybe that's a better way to put it. So what's next? I don't know. We went from vegan to sensible to keto to Porsche control, your guess is as good as mine. I don't know. Let me see, if she put up another video, I swear to God. I mean, granted, I like when she puts up videos because it gives me, well, content, but okay, nothing. So where from here, I'm not 100% sure. Um, maybe another change in, in diet, maybe, I don't know, back to smoothies for a while. Uh, it could be, could be any direction at this point. I feel like her cycles got slightly interrupted when she moved. Um, the level of, uh, I don't want to say BB had a level of supervision over her, but I think certain behaviors were stifled when she was living with him as, around her eating, and those aren't there now that she's with Pete's. So, we'll see, we'll see. Something to talk about next week, I guess. At any rate, we're gonna leave it there. We're gonna wish her well, I guess. Doesn't mean it's gonna happen, but we're, I'm, well, I'm, I'm gonna wish her well. And I hope this time is the time. No, I'm not optimistic. But if she is going to get better, one of these times is going to be the time. So unless she's a absolutely hopeless cause, uh, I have one half of 1% hope that she will get better. So here's to you, foodie beauty. So thank you all for watching. Please do subscribe. Hit the like button and the bell so you can get all the alerts. You can follow Mark and I on Facebook at Smoky Steve Space and Mark, or on Instagram at Smoky Steve and Mark. Our email address and contact info is all listed below. Thank you again, and we will catch up with y'all tomorrow. Happy Saturday! Bye.